The Canadian Rocky Mountains lie to the west of Canada in the provinces of Alberta and British Columbia. The main national parks are in Alberta. If you started your trip in one of the Canadian built-up cities, such as Toronto, then Alberta will be a bit of a shocking and pleasant change to what you have been used to. If you start in Calgary, the route west along the Trans-Canada Highway takes a couple of hours to get to Banff National Park. The landscape is fairly flat to start with, but then gradually the rocky mountain range emerges in the distance. There is a fee for each day that you stay in the park, and Banff is one of several national parks in Alberta, including Yoho, Glacier, Jasper, Kootenay, Dinosaur and Revelstoke. The town of Banff itself is the capital of the Rockies and during the peak season can see 50,000 new visitors daily. The town is situated around Tunnel Mountain and straddles the Bow River at an altitude of 1,384 metres or 4,540 feet. The main road off Banff Avenue is full of craft and souvenir shops and also hosts many hostels, hotels and lodges which normally take the form of log cabins such as this one. An easy trek to find your bearings and get away from the rush is to head up the Tunnel Mountain Road. At various stopping points you can get great views of the forests around Tunnel Mountain and the Bow River that snakes around it. The town grew up around the hot springs found here in the late 19th century. By 1888, the railroad manager, William Van Horn, began to sense the tourist potential and built the Banff Springs Hotel. Below are a rock formation known as the Hoodoos. They almost look like ghosts and were formed from the erosion of the limestone rock by the elements over thousands of years. The footpath here takes you further up the hill and provides views of the wildlife in the forests around Tunnel Mountain. The hillsides are covered in fir trees and the clear blue water of the river snakes through the valley. For the first time you get a sense of the tranquility and unspoilt beauty of the National Park and appreciate the importance of maintaining this treasure for the future generations. Sulphur Mountain is the largest mountain around Banff, rising to 2,282 metres above sea level.
For the brave visitors, there is a three-mile trek to the top of the mountain. But with little children, that would be impossible. The easier alternative is the gondola, which takes a few minutes to gently ascend to the top while giving great views of the town below. The gondola climbs the 700 meters at a steep 51 degrees. From the top of Sulphur Mountain, you can see many of the other nearby peaks, the town of Banff, the Bow River, and quite a distance into the National Park. There are many viewing platforms and a visitor centre at the top, where you will also find the obligatory food and souvenirs. On the way back down, you can make out the famous Banff Springs Hotel that started the whole tourist boom here well over a hundred years ago. <laughs> Heading north out of Banff, you soon spot an animal crossing point. This is one of over 45 now established in the park to allow animals to cross the highway without distress or discomfort. The bridges have been designed very intelligently to look like a natural wildlife route to the animals, rather than a man-made concoction. The main objective is the preservation of the natural environment and the safety of the wildlife. The journey north of Bamp first leads to Moraine Lake, which sits on the southwestern side of the park, bordering Kootenay National Park. The journey up to Lake Moraine normally takes a 20-minute detour up a 13-kilometre mountain road. Very rarely, traffic on the route grinds to a halt due to falling debris or accidents. In this case, two climbers had fallen and one was seriously hurt, so traffic was halted and a rescue helicopter was called. It took about 15 minutes and then the climbers were on their way to hospital and slowly the traffic began to move again. Lake Moraine itself was the first on the route to show this amazing turquoise colour. The logs on the waterfront heightened the sense of being out in the wilderness and close to nature.
This deep blue colour of the lake is heightened in the spring and summer, when deposits of glacial silt known as rock flour are washed into the lake from the mountain rivers. The fine powder sits just beneath the water surface and absorbs all colours except those in the blue-green part of the spectrum, hence the vivid colour of the lake. The base of the lake has a waterside lodge providing accommodation, canoes and meals. This is also the meeting point of many trails, and there is information on the relative difficulty of each of the trails. Had there been more time, the views looking down on the lake from the top of one of these peaks would have been spectacular. The lake is surrounded by ten mountain peaks, hence its nickname, Valley of the Ten Peaks. More recently, it has been renamed Wenk Chemna, the stony Indian word for ten. The peaks starting with Mount Fay, then Allen and Biddle are all around 3,000 metres high. Just further up the route, past Paradise Valley, comes Lake Louise, the most famous of the lakes in the Rockies. Again, the lake is a vivid turquoise colour that looks unreal. The lake was named after the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. It is a UNESCO-designated World Heritage Site, and you can see why. People flock here in the summer to see the beautiful lake when temperatures average 19 degrees, and in the winter to go skiing on the raw slopes in front of us when temperatures dip to minus 6. The view of the mountains in the distance also includes the Victoria Glacier that dazzles with the reflection of the snow in the summer sunlight. You can also hire canoes and go into the lake itself, probably the fastest way of getting away from the crowds of tourists. Just next to the lake is the Chateau Lake Louise, which dominates the area. It is an exclusive hotel built in 1894, and unless you are staying there, many of the balconies and views are out of bounds to you. There is a small snack bar, but the hotel really only caters for people staying there. A shame, because the chateau takes up the prime location next to the lake. The lake was formed 10,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, as glaciers were moving back up to the North Pole. There is a pedestrian path that runs along the lake shore. <laughs> lake Louise is a truly awesome sight, and if you are able to take a trail up to the mountainside, the views of the lake become even more amazing. The first white Canadian, guided by local natives to see the lake, in 1882, Tom Wilson, wrote, I never saw such a matchless scene. I felt puny in body, but glorified in spirit and soul. Icefields Parkway is a dual carriageway that weaves its way through the amazing mountain valleys, taking in any number of lakes, mountains, waterfalls, forests and glaciers. It is 230 kilometres towards Jasper, the route was used by natives and fur traders from Europe 200 years ago as a route through the mountains. The 
further up the park where you travel, the more snow-capped the peaks become, heading towards the Columbia ice field. There are few places to stop and take in the view, but not many places to stay or eat along the way. Further up the parkway, the road follows the Saskatchewan River. Columbia Icefield is the most spectacular glacier on this route and marks the boundary between the Banff and Jasper National Parks. There is a large car park opposite from where visitors get into one of the ice explorers to drive up the glacier. The Icefield is one of the largest south of the Arctic Circle and covers an area of over 300 square kilometres. In front of us, is the Athabasca Glacier, which is six kilometers long, and the explorers take visitors quite a way up the glacier. The ice is 365 meters deep and feeds the Pacific, Arctic, and Atlantic oceans. This is why the area is designated a UN World Heritage Site. An hour into Jasper, you reach Athabasca Falls, a moderate waterfall on the Athabasca River, just 25 kilometers south of Jasper Town itself. There is parking and restroom facilities here, although the restroom is very, very basic. The river starts at the Columbia Glacier, around 70 kilometers south of here. You can see the water crashing down into the various stages of the gorge before it heads back to the calm and starts the rest of its journey. You can see Mount Kerkeskin in the background. At the point that the water takes a tumble, it crosses a layer of hard quartzite rock, which will not be eroded by the powerful river. The river has smoothed the walls and created potholes where the sand and rocks carried by the river have carved their way through. Although the drop of the fall is only 23 metres, it is the size and speed of the Athabasca River that makes this quite a powerful fall, as you can see by the way the water hits the rocks. As with all of the features of the national parks, they cater for visitors in both summer and winter. So in the summer, there is whitewater rafting, while in the winter, the focus turns to cross-country skiing. There is a visitor's path that allows you to take in views at different points as the water crashes down. But even on the path, it can get slippery due to the greasy spray thrown up from the falls. It is not advisable to try to go beyond the fences onto the rocks as these are even more slippery and in the past people have fallen to their deaths. Jasper is the main town here and is the place after which the park is named. Unlike Banff, 
It is a lot quieter and seems out of season. Jasper is probably more famous as a skiing town, although it does cater for excursions and activities in the summer as well. The railway station is the dominant feature of the town. The famous Rocky Mountaineer trains stop here and the tracks also bring hundreds of skiers in the winter season. There are a few modest hotels and a small selection of fast food outlets and restaurants, but most of the facilities are for outdoor adventure, such as skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, horse riding and other activities. From Jasper, it's a day's journey southwest towards the main city in British Columbia, Vancouver. The route gradually becomes flatter as you move away from the mountain ranges and river valleys. But the weather is often wet, with low hanging clouds, fog banks that seem to last forever and suddenly kill your visibility to dangerous levels, and the odd rainbow to brighten the gloom. We hope that you have enjoyed this brief tour of Alberta and British Columbia, taking in the national parks of Banff and Jasper. Join us again for Travel and History on MTA.